for joining today for this video. Today we're going to talk about the decontamination of a genome assembly. So when you sequence a genome, it's common that you have a contamination from foreign organisms that get mixed with the uh, genomic material of a species of interest. Uh, this can be um, bacterial, viruses, it can also be human contamination um, when you uh, get the samples. Um, you can also have uh, plants if you're sequencing material from stomach or this kind of, of contamination. So when you want to build a reference genome, what you want to get is you want to have only uh, the nuclear DNA of your species. So this workflow that we're going to uh, work on today, it includes decontaminating DNA from other species, but also removing the mitochondrial DNA that you might have uh, to separate the mitochondrial DNA from the nuclear DNA and build a reference assembly for your species. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to export the data uh, into Galaxy. So the only thing we need in this case is the uh, assembly FASTA file. So we're going to go into Galaxy. Uh, if you don't have an account yet, please create an account and connect to it. And we're going to create a new, a new history that you can do by uh, pushing on the plus button if you already have a working history. And we're going to name it for, our today, for today's tutorial. So we're going to call it decontamination. You do that by clicking on the little pencil next to the history name, typing decontamination, and clicking on save. Okay, so now that we have our history brand new and empty, uh, we're going to go into the activity bar on the left and click on upload data. So you can see on this upload data, you have different options. You can choose file from your local um, browser. You can choose remote file if you have um, for example, AWS repository connected to your account, or you can use page paste fetch data where you can enter URL and that's what we're gonna do. So you click on the paste fetch data, you see this window here, and that's where you're gonna paste the URL for assembly faster. Uh, we're gonna call it contaminated assembly. And we're gonna tell Galaxy, that is a FASTA file. And click Start to start the upload. So it's going to go green in the small window, saying that it understood the URL, it transmitted to the Galaxy. So we can close this window. And it hasn't been uploading yet, so it's gray. It means it's waiting. It's going to switch to yellow now, which means it's actually downloading the data into your history. And we're going to wait until it gets to green. We're going to go back to the um, tutorial and we're going to see that the first step that we have to do is genome masking. So genome masking is a technique that uh, identify area in the genome in the sequence that are uh, don't have a lot of identity. Uh, it can be repeats, it's mostly repeats, and uh, these are regions that we don't want the classifier algorithm to focus on, because it doesn't bring information on what specific, uh, on what species, it doesn't provide a lot of information in our case for classification. So uh, we're going to replace this um, base that don't provide a lot of information by either small case, which is called soft masking, or uh, ends, which is called hard masking. So you're going to use soft masking, which means smaller, uh, lowercase letter instead of uh, uppercase letter, when you have a tool that understands that it should ignore these soft masked regions. If you're not sure, uh, which is our case here, uh, whether the algorithm is understanding that when the letters are lowercase, you need to ignore them, we're going to do a step of hard masking, which is replacing the lowercase by uh, the letter ends. In that case, when the tools does alignment or uh, blasts, uh, this region 
has zero information for it. So it's not going to use it at all. And that's going to allow us to have a faster and a less uh, memory intensive tools uh, running. So what we're going to use for that, uh, we're going to use Dust Masker, which is a soft masker tool. And uh, then we're going to do a hard masking step. So let's go back to Galaxy and use uh, the Dust Masker tool. So we're going to use a FASTA file from history. And we're going to select the contaminated assembly. Here. Dust level we're going to set at 40. And the output format that we want is the FASTA file with the masked sequence. Then once you have changed all these parameters, you can click on the run tool on the upper right of the tool parameters. Okay, so you can see now in your history that the dust mask file has been generated. Uh, now we're going to wait for it to run. And then we're going to go to the next step, which is hard masking the genome. We're going to wait a second so we can look at what the genome looks like once it's been soft mask and um, I'll be back once it's green. Okay, now we can see that our mask file is green, which means the masking has finished running. And we're going to take a look at what a sequence looks like. So in your history, in your data set, uh, you're going to click on the little high here. And that's going to display the content of the file in the middle window. So when we look at scaffold one, we see that the large portion of the beginning of the scaffold one is made of repeat that have all been soft masks. So everything is in lowercase. And this region correspond to the uh, telomere repeat that are at the extremity of our chromosomes. And when you scroll down, 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 you see that this repeat region is very large. And after a while, we arrive to this uppercase region, which has more information and personality than the rest of our uh, lowercase sequences. Um, OK, so we can see that it has been soft mask. And the next step is going to be to hard mask. So we can use our classifier and identify which sequences belong to our species and which sequences belong to another organism. So in order to do the hard masking, we're going to use the tool called text transformation. Uh, but first, we're going to uh, rename our file so we know what we're talking about. And this file, we're going to click on the uh, little pencil in the data sets. And we're going to rename it soft mask. Assembly, for example. We're going to save, and we see that the name has been changed in our history. So now we're going to look for the text transformation tool in order to hard mask our file. So we're going to use text transformation with said, and we're going to use this tool on our soft mask assembly. So now we're going to use this set program. Uh, I'm going to discuss it in a minute. So this set program tells us that for every line that does not start with a, sh with a uh, arrow, which means all the sequences, not including the faster header, we're going to replace any instance of A, T, C, G, or N that I know a case by uppercase Ns which means that you, any uppercase letter, lowercase letter that might have been a soft mask by our dust masker, masker are going to replace, be replaced by uppercase ends that are hard mask. We are including lower end, 
lowercase as n because we might have already n in our sequences and that happens if you have gaps, for example, in your scaffolds. So once we have the set program here, um, we're going to run the tool on the soft mask assembly. So we click on run tool and you can see that the text transformation is in progress and appeared in our history. So we're going to wait until it turns green and then we'll continue the rest of the tutorial. Now that our text transformation is green, we're going to take a look at our sequence, click on the eye and see that everything that was lowercase in our soft mask assembly is now replaced by the letter N. Let's scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and then you arrive to the sequence that we get. So we're going to rename this file by clicking on the pencil and renaming hard masked assembly. Save. And now we have a hard masked assembly in the history. So the next step is going to be to identify which sequence does not belong to our organism. So we're going to use the tool called Kraken2. And Kraken2 is going to identify sequences that are belong to a database. And the database that we're going to use is a database containing bacteria, virus, and human, because these are the main contaminants that we expect to find in our species. And um, uh, this database is called a uh, plus PF database uh, containing ref six sender and uh, protozo protozoa and fungi. Uh, so we're going to use Kraken2. We're using it on single reads because we're using it on scaffold, not on reads and we're using it on her hard mask assembly. We want to have the scientific name to be able to identify which are uh, the organism that we are cleaning, and we're going to use a confidence on 0 0.3. So confidence here, 0 0.3, prints the scientific name. Uh, we want to split the classified and unclassified output. And we're going to use the database called plus PF from 2021. Once you've changed all these parameters, so we're checking, we have the database, we have split classified and unclassified outputs. We have the confidence at 0 0.3 and we are printing the scientific name instead of just tax IDs for our personal curiosity. And then we click on run tool. Okay, this step is going to be a little bit so you can go get a cup of coffee and I'll meet you back once it runs. Okay, now that the Kraken2 datasets are run, let's take a look at the outputs. So first we have a tabular file containing the classification of all our, of our sequences. So you can see that we have five columns. The first column contains U or C, depending on if the sequence is unclassified, U or classified, C. Second column contains the name of the sequence. Column 3 contains the classification, so here the first one is unclassified. And column 4 contains uh, the size of the sequence. Column 5 contains the detail about um, the camera classification. Um, you can see more detail in the training material. The next Two datasets contain the FASTA file for the classified and unclassified read. So you can see here, unclassified, we have 52 sequences, 
and classified, we have five sequences. So remember, we used the database that contained only possible contaminant, which means everything that is a potential contaminant has been identified with the database and is classified, which means that we have 52 sequences that belong to the species that we wanted to sequence. Uh, we want to take a look at what exactly we have in our contaminants. So we're going to um, clean up this classification file and extract the information about only the classified sequences, which are our contaminants. So to do that, we're going to extract the colon containing the information, which are colon 1 for uh, classified or unclassified, colon 2 the name, of the sequence and colon three, the uh, category of uh, classification. So we're going to use the cut tool to extract our colons. So in the tool search bar, you're going to type cut and we're going to use cut colon from a table. So as I said before, we're going to select colon one, two and three. So you can add C3 to this colon. We have a tabular file, so we keep the delimiter as a tab, and we're going to use it on the Kraken classification dataset. So you can run the tool, and uh, we're going to see that these three uh, first colon have been selected. The next step is to select only the classified sequences, because um, the unclassified sequence doesn't tell us much except that it's unclassified. So to do that, we're going to filter our new tabular file using the filter tool. So we're going to select uh, the cut that we just run here, number seven, and with the following condition. So we want C1 to be equal to C, because we want to extract only the classified information. So now that the filter is done, we can take a look at what contaminants we have in our assembly. So we can see that we have five sequences identified as contaminant. Four of them belong to the Salmonella and one to the uh, Yersinia, Yersinia phage. Uh, so now that we have this list of contaminants, we want to extract them from our assembly. And in order to do that, we want to keep only the list of sequence to extract. So to do that, we'll do an, another cut. And in this time, you're going to select only the second colon with the name of the contaminant, contaminated sequences. So once again, we look for cut in our toolbar. This time, we select only C2. And we're going to use it on the filtered data set. In order to organize our history better, we're going to rename the previous file, the result of the filtered step, as list information about contaminants. for example. Name it as you want to name it. Okay, so you can actually rename a file. Well, actually it works, but looks like it's better to do it before running the job on it or after the job has finished running. Okay, so we're going to check that our cut worked fine. Okay, it looks like we have just the sequence name. Okay, so now we have the information about 
the contaminants. Uh, we're going to do a similar process to identify the sequences that are belong to the mitochondria. Uh, so we're going to go back and use our um, hard mask assembly. And on that hard mask assembly, we're going to run the tool called uh, NCBI blast plus blast N. And uh, the nuclear query sequence is going to be our hard mask assembly. And we're actually going to use RefSec mitochondrion. This is a database that contains mitochondrial sequences, and we're going to blast our sequences against this database to identify um, what which of our sequences might belong to mitochondria. Uh, so we want to use uh, a tabular output, and we're going to use this sequence of colon. So we want to use the blast n because we are querying nucleotide sequence against a nucleotide database. Okay, and so we want to use QSEC ID, SS, SSEC ID, okay, QSEC, SSEC ID, length Q start and Q end, so this one we don't care, Q start and Q end, and E value. In the extended colon, we want to select QLEN. Query sequence length. And then we want to select in miscellaneous colon, uh, QCOVs and QCOV HSP. Looks good, and we're gonna run the tool. Okay, we can see here that the Blast 10 created a data set in our history. This one gonna take a bit long again, so uh, you can take a break, and we'll be back once it's run. Okay, now that it's done running, let's take a look at what the blast and result looks like. So we have a list of uh, scores for each sequence and uh, how it relates to the sequences in the database. So we can't really do anything out of it. It's, it's a bit obscure for us. So we're going to use a tool called pass blast and result to extract the list of our contaminants. Uh, corresponding to mitochondrial sequences in this case. And we're going to use pass mitochondrial blast. Okay, we're going to select uh, the blast and result that we just run. And we're going to use run tool. Okay, so let's take a look at our outputs. So the first one is a tabulated file with in column to the name of the scaffold that have been identified as related to reference in the database. Uh, in column three is the um, sequence in the database that have been related to and uh, the length of the scaffold, the length of the alignments and the percentage of the coverage of the alignments compared to the size of the contig. And uh, every sequence that appears in that file are sequences that have been uh, identified as belonging to a mitochondrial genome, and they are grouped in the second output, which is the contaminant scaffold list. So you can see here we have two scaffolds that have been identified as belonging to the mitochondria. So 
Um, this part of the analysis with these data sets and the other part of the analysis that we did previously removing the contaminants uh, gives us a file, a list of sequences that are not belonging to the nuclear genome. So what we're going to do is we're going to concatenate these two files to create one list of sequences that we want to remove from our assembly to keep only the, the nuclear genome in our reference assembly. So we're going to go to tools and select concatenate data sets. So the first data set is going to be the list of contaminant of um, mitochondrial sequences that we just produced. We're going to insert a second data set and we're going to select the list of contaminant sequence and we're going to run the tool. Now you can see that we have a list with all the sequences that we want to remove. And to remove them from our assembly, we're going to use the tool GFA stats. So the input file is going to be a original contaminated assembly. We are using the original file and not the masked file because when we mask the file, uh, especially when we hard mask them, we actually lose a lot of information that can be useful. Uh, down the line for analysis. So we want to keep as much information as we want. So we're going to, as we can, as we're going to use the original assembly to remove the sequences. So we're going to specify target sequence that we want to exclude. And uh, we see that nothing is available right now. So we're going to look at accepted format and we notice that what we need is a bed file. And our file that we concatenated is a text file. So once again, we're going to modify the type of the data set. So we're clicking on the pencil in the data sets. We're going into data type and we're going to select bed file and we're going to save. Now we're coming back to GFA stats. So this time you can do that because GFA stat has two way of removing target sequences. If you provide only a list of uh, sequence name, it's going to remove completely these sequences. But you can also provide a bed file with the start and the end for each of these sequence, and then it's going to remove only part of the sequences and not the whole sequences. But in our case, we want to remove them completely, so we don't need to add a start and the end in our bed file. So once again, in input file, we're using the contaminated assembly. We're enabling the specification of target sequencing. And we're using the exclude specific interval. And we're going to select our data set, our concatenated data set. We're going to select genome assembly manipulation. And we want to output a FASTA file. Now that we selected all this parameter, we can use run tool. Now we can take a look at the result of our purging. And we see that we have 50 sequences left compared to the 57 sequences in our original assembly. So this confirmed that we removed the five sequences that were identified as contaminant, plus the two sequences identified as mitochondrial sequences. And now that you have this final assembly, you can start doing analysis with it, publish it, do the manual curation. Uh, you are sure that you have your ref your only nuclear DNA and only your nuclear DNA of your species of interest in your assembly. Thank you for listening and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.